that is Pastor Ruth and Apostle Freddie and Shiloh family. And we have a special guest, and she's not just another guest, she's our family. And, and Councilwoman uh, Pam Patterson, would you say hello, please? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear more from her later on. So before we proceed, please. We just like to say this pledge promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now my, my, my kids are going to do a song of J-E-S-U-S, love that wake us up. Um, go ahead, please. And now set up. exciting that we see young people getting to be alive you know and now we have this powerful woman of God you know you could be a politician you could stay godly in politics is that right could you just say hello say again uh, our councilwoman uh, Pam Patterson and she also used to be the mayor of San Juan Capistrano well thank you so much for having me here I'm happy to be here oh it's a blessing yes praise God so um, you know, we want to really ask about this question. Why is in polit uh, you're in politics as a lawyer and also a mother, a wife, and most of all, you're a Christian woman. Most people don't even bother to be in politics. And here she is. Everything is there, like a lawyer, a wife, a mother, and a politician. And most of all, a very godly woman of God. So how, how do you put it together? <laughs> how do you juggle all this? Well, I... I have, I'm a mother of five children, and my youngest daughter was born with disabilities. And so I had this legal, this law license that I really actually hadn't been using because I was just a full-time mother. And I needed to start litigating on her behalf because the government isn't complying with the laws with respect to special needs children, and children are dying as a result. So I started representing children with disabilities, and then when it, when I actually started realizing that there were issues in my city with respect to dishonest decisions that were really taking down our historic town with respect to way oversized development and that sort of thing, I started getting involved, starting attending council meetings, and um, in the end, we needed a new majority on that 2014 election, and only two people that we believed in were running for council at that time. So. The day before the deadline to put your name in, I thought, oh, God, help me. I think I'm running for city council because I'm either going to have to move mm -hmm. or, or, I, or we need a new majority and somebody else has to run. So I signed up for the job. <laughs> and um, so that's how it all began. Wow. Isn't it amazing? You know, it's like that's why we want to know what started it. And out of the need of her son, look. It takes one mother that cares so much about their son to do something. And then look, now it's being used mightily. So, Apostle, is there any question? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, Councilwoman, uh, uh, do you believe that the state of California is uh, in danger of antichrist liberalism? We are entrenched in it. Okay. So that so. explains our, my next question. <laughs> I would say, where are we in that process? And you're saying we're entrenched. Oh, yes. Okay. We're... Wow. We're practically drowning in it. We're, wow. So, 
Wow. And, and actually what I can say about that is um, my belief is that corruption starts at the local level. We typically look at what's going on at the, in the federal government or at the state level, but it really starts at the local level. And we have really been remiss in our duties as citizens of this great country that we live in. I mean, if you look at the foundational documents, they are based on our God-given rights. But we, and, and quite frankly, our forefathers, I mean, the sacrifices that they made to put together a godly nation. And, and we've been taking advantage of it, taking it for granted. So, um, so we need to get, we need godly people, people that fear the Lord to get involved in local politics, start local, and then you can rise to the top. And that's what we really need, people to step up to the plate and start defending this nation. That's true, I agree. We agree 100% with that. And I was going to ask you uh, another question. As a, a former mayor of San Juan Capistrano and as a, a current uh, a city councilwoman, uh, what have you been doing uh, to fight ungodly bills that have come up in the state of California? And also, uh, things. Uh, what have you done for your constituents and others as a whole in your, in your city? Well, it, with respect to my city, I keep my campaign promises. I promise to, promise to protect the city and not to vote for oversized development and to be fiscally responsible and, and to be a good steward on behalf of the people. And, and I keep my campaign promises. So, and you can tell that by my voting record. With respect to what's going on at the state level, I put, um, there are a few of us that put on our agendas, the council agendas, that we were going to oppose the sanctuary state uh, bill that Governor Brown recently signed into law. And so actually because of that, those people that did do that in California, we were invited to have a meeting at the White House with President Trump. So I got to meet with President Trump on May 16th and with uh, the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, and. Um, so it was uh, an incredible experience, and but we also he asked us there so that we could tell him what he could do to help us with California. So that that's, that's the wonderful. latest you know, thing. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, well, it's exciting because one of our pastors from Shalu Tabernacle Church happens to be a, her constituent, one of them, <laughs> Pastor Alfredo, <laughs> lives in San Juan Capistrano. How hopeful is that, that one of your council women is such a godly, powerful woman of God? So what do you think, uh, Pastor? Um, you know, this is an amazing opportunity, um, not only to have a, a, a council, a woman uh, that is open, um, you know, for everyone, but a woman of God, um, that it's, it's, it's open to, for us to come and, and, and reach and, and sit down and, and speak about the needs in the community. Uh, this morning I was able to speak uh, to a, an officer about the importance of, of that, and, and, and this is amazing. I know this is God, and, and I thank you, Lord, for opening up an opportunity. Uh, for me, as a resident of San Juan Capistrano for the last 30 years, I've seen uh, a lot of things happen, and uh, I'm happy to be part of, of God's side now to, to make a change, to step up, uh, like a councilwoman said earlier, it's time to step up and, and say yes. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of need in the city of San Juan Capistrano, and uh, I'm definitely happy and encouraged. This has really encouraged me to continue to say yes to the Lord. More than ever, right, Pastor? Amen. I mean, he drives all the way from San Juan Capistrano to Rancho Cucamonga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and guess that's why, look, this is so exciting that we're here in TV Network Cross TV speaking about that a constituent, a, a person, one person matters. Okay, so most of the time, most people think we don't care or our public officials are not, doesn't really care. Or our vote uh, doesn't count. Or vote, the vote doesn't count. So how can you encourage the viewer that it, it's okay to talk to you all, <laughs> that you're a human being, that you will listen to them. Actually, they, you work for them. Is that right, oh, Councilwoman? Absolutely. 
My duty is to represent the people. So the more I get feedback from what your needs are and maybe issues that you're having with the city, the better I can represent you. So the more contact, the better, actually. So. And then legally, mm -hmm. there's a lot of lawyers. Of course, she's also a lawyer, knows that everybody has their right. So that's why her, uh, her son, you know, the youngest one, you know, has a special need. He has the same right as everyone else. So this is incredible to know that all of us can be involved. Why? This is about our lives and everyone in our family and generation to come. So is there anything else you want to emphasize, Councilwoman, about anything about government and being a wife and being part of this? Well, one thing that I think is important and we've lost, lost touch with is I think everybody should commit to reading the Bible from page one all the way through every year so that, number one, we know what it says. We, don't, we aren't relying on somebody else to tell us what it says. And in addition, every 4th of July that we read the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights so that we know what it says. I did that at the San Juan, um, the, the fireworks display. I was supposed to o open the fireworks display um, in 2016 when I was mayor there. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make the most of this. I'm going to read the Bill of Rights. And I read the Bill of Rights to the crowd. And they cheered. It, it was great. And so people need to understand that it's not just an annual party. There's a reason that we get out there and that there are actually fireworks because that reflects the battle that they were involved with. I mean, they were risking their lives. And we need to appreciate the sacrifices that they've made for us. And we need to know what our rights are so that we can easily identify them without hiring an attorney to know that they're being taken away and that we have to stand up and stop that. So. Amen. Wow. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Biblical principle. People think that Christians especially thinks that, hey, you know what, government and churches should be what? Separated. That's not true. You just heard her. We should be doing it and then apply the biblical principle to our daily lives, especially in the government. So is there anything else about you as a constituent again or a post party? Is there any more question? Um, did you have any? No. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say, uh, of course, the Bible says that... Um, that righteousness exalted uh, any nation, but a, a sin is of approach any people. So uh, we have to remember that uh, righteousness is something that God proclaims in his word, and we should ask him to help us to walk in that. But the country as a whole needs to, to walk in it. And uh, the only way we can do that is we have leaders, Christian leaders, like Pam here and uh, other leaders, and I believe the president. Now I know a lot of people... Uh, are in opposition to, to President Trump, but um, uh, he's done quite a bit, uh, and he may not agree with everything he does as he does it, but uh, I know God put him in that position. I always say this, Ben. He's a 45th president. Many call him a Cyrus, which he is, but he's different in the sense that I know he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and has received the Lord as his Savior, but uh, he's the 45th president, and Cyrus is mentioned in Isaiah 45, which is kind of, I think it's prophetic. So and some God. people may say, yeah, I believe it's God. And so that, that's something, um, you know, righteous exalted the nation. And, and, and so if this nation wants to be exalted, that's why the United States of America is in the position it is today as a leader. And, of course, a lot of people really want to pull down the leadership of the United States and make it part of this globalist uh, uh, community, which it... it, it you know, we, we don't want to be an enmity with any nations, but at the same time, we have to assume and keep that leadership role, you know, as long as we're following what God wants, and that's, that's the only way it can happen. And uh, it seems that in past administrations, they wanted this country kind of meld into this globalist community and, and, and lose our, our position. Uh, as uh, I, I, Some may disagree with me, but God-given position, mm -hmm. and, and all the things that, that our democracy or the ideals uh, came here. You won't find these kind of ideals really in any other uh, government, right. really, you know. Right. And um, so that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, did you, wanna, you have something else? Yes. Oh, wow. Thank you. Anyway, um, we're boldly telling everyone what's happening 
in the government and in the house has to start in the house first. And the cross is the basis for everything. You heard our councilwoman. It says there that it has to start at the house, in your heart. And that's why like this, in our home, in everyone's home, especially in our churches, we want to represent God in our home, in our city, in our state. So all this thing, we, we, we bow down to Him. Because eventually, this is what they have to see and hear. Especially when we're about to do the rally. We need to know that God loves everybody. Matthew 5, 44 said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. I mean, the love revolution is on. God's love revolution is on. Whether we're ready or not, we have to be on it 24-7. And this is the only position. Is to be on our knees before God, praying and thanking God for this nation and helping this nation to go back to the biblical principle by putting people in position of leadership from President Trump, Vice President Pence, and everyone else, our councilwoman here, Pam Lord, and everyone, Senator Mike Morrell, and everybody that has stand in the gap for this nation. Thank you, Jesus. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Awaken my love for you. Awaken my heart, awaken my hunger. Awaken my love for you. Woman, can you just ask everyone who doesn't know Jesus? Because this is not a time to not know Jesus. <laughs> in revolution, if you don't know what is happening, if you don't want to be involved, you're gonna be squashed, you're gonna be just be broken and just be dead. You don't want it. This is not a time to be dead. God wants us to be alive and so far for God. So we have to be that epistle for Jesus. So can you just lead everyone, please? Commit your hearts and come to God 
it will be, it will change your lives forever. And start reading the Bible. Read the Bible daily. That's how you can connect. So praise God and Amen. pray to God. Amen. Apostle, could you lead people in the Lord, those who doesn't know God, please? Coming to Jesus just requires a simple confession of faith. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouths, amen, and believe in our hearts. So we have to confess Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts. God raised him from the dead and we'll be saved. All I have to say is a simple prayer. If you repeat this prayer, then you will be saved. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Guide me now by your Holy Spirit and your word, the Bible. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, you're part of God's family now. You have eternal life. That means if you pass from this life, which is very short on this earth, you'll go to be with him forever. Anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and confesses him and follows his word is saved and has that promise. So that's all that you had to do and also try to find a a church that is, I could, we say spirit-filled. We believe in the gifts of spirit and operation. So find a church that's spirit-filled. In Jesus' name. That's right. And please, please support this Cross TV and the Way TV. There are, there are so in fire for God, and they would need your support financially and prayer, everything. Please pour into this, um, this TV network that is one of the really just proclaiming the gospel, the truth of the gospel here around the world. So now we're going to do this about the J-E-S-U-S. Let's go for it. This is a time. This is really the love revolution is happening. For the last 25 years, 26 years of knowing Jesus and loving Jesus, I have never seen what, how, what God is doing. So we're urging everybody to be part of what God is doing in the government especially. Come on, our, our beloved uh, councilwoman, sister, what do you think is this? Is this party in the government? Is it hard or what? Tell me. Tell them what's happening in the government. They can join in right now, the last minute. You have a choice to make. We need God-fearing people in government. So the elections are coming up. You probably need to get your name in in your city um, by the first week of August and just make the decision and commit. And then once you get elected, you just have to remain steadfast to your convictions, okay? Because most people get elected and they do a 180. So we need... <laughs> people with convictions and, and ethics and we need them in government now that's what we really need to save our country amen amen so be serious come on this is a serious thing make sure that god is being elevated in this country your vote counts so we're gonna have a party in the government because why god is coming back hallelujah thank you jesus <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, Lord. Come on. It's fun to serve God in the government mountain, especially. We're doing a rally all the time regarding Bill AB2943. Please say no to it. We're praying for it in the name of Jesus. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. No more. No to SB320. No to 21. AB2119. And all the ungodly bills. No. We're believing that the Roe versus Wade abortion will be turned around. With our new Supreme Court. Amen. Amen. <laughs> righteousness Woo! exalts a nation. Yes. Oh, righteousness exalts a nation. 
we're crying out, we're crying out for righteousness to reign and rule in this land. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this Cross TV and the Way TV. All for your glory, oh God, and all the TV network, God. That let them be convicted to tell the truth, but nothing but the truth, Father. Woo! We pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. And God bless Donald Trump. God bless Donald Trump and God bless America. Woo! God bless Israel. God bless all nations. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Greatest harvest of all is here. It's God's love revolution 24-7. Thank you, Father. Yes. And God bless California. We need to have a fabulous, a God-inspired election in, in November. And we need to take back our state. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're believing for that. California is for Jesus. <laughs> Woo, God is good. Again, thank you for your support. God bless you. Christian Reality Live. Show us the proof. Uh, Pastor Brady, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Ruth Hillary. And the Shiloh family and our beloved councilwoman, Pam Pedersen. Please vote for her again this November. Okay, San Juan Capistrano. Yes, thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Come on, family. J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S. We is the best. J-E-S-U-S. 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 We is the best. J -E -S -U -S. J -E -S -U -S. 